How you doing? Hero Nun get here again. We're going to be talking about some of the skill changes and different things that are happening here in the Dark Brotherhood. I'm going to be honest, it's going to be a little bit dry here, guys. I will try to get through it as quickly and as painlessly as possible. I'm going to go over some of the interesting things I saw, at least. Um, but you're going to see me look over here to the right here to go over my notes on some of this. Um, and scrolling through some of the things here. I apologize if I get anything wrong on this and some of these things don't go into live. But remember, we're on PTS. A lot of the stuff is changed right at right as the thing is launched too. So some of the changes that I talk about here will not be present in the live version too. So first things we're gonna go over is just an overview about what's changing. Several class skill changes will be um, using it poison and other adjustments. Weapon abilities are redone. Heavy armor hit passives have been gutted and changed. Guild lines, uh, guild lines have been done. Fighter's Guild is much more a stamina-based uh, skill line, and Mage's Guild is much more a magicka-based skill line. Vampire skills are now managed uh, are are managed like a disease. Adjustments to Cyrodiil skins uh, skill lines, and also adjustments to, to werewolf skill lines. This seems very short, but it is a lot of stuff. I really improve, I really implore you, everyone, please go to the forums, take a look at some of the st stuff. There's stuff patched every time that we come through here. I'm just going to go over some of the interesting things that I found here right now as we go through some of this stuff here. Uh, so some of the cri uh, some of the stuff right on top. Okay, one abilities with the heal base and damage done basically anything that damages and heals at the same time is now going to no longer double dip meaning you're not going to crit on both the heal and on the damage um the damage from the abilities uh can still critically strike but healing is no longer rolling an additional critical strike chance so you're no longer able to get you know both on those if you have high crit chance on uh, on your spells um, all pets and summons will now have 500 additional health in PvP areas. Okay, that's good for a PvP buff. Break free will no longer remove, um, no longer removes immunity from silence effects. AKA, if you have somebody go in there and, um, you know, cast a negate on you and you get CC with a wrecking blow, it no longer breaks it out. Um, changing the abilities such as focus charge and shield charge will now fire more reliably, aka gap closers uh, that don't have a teleport. Uh, your fix the issue with block damage over time, various abilities such as poison arrow and unstable flame, aka you can now poison people that are blocking, uh, which is very important for this because we're going to get a lot of changes to poison inside this as well. Um, Heavy uh, fixed issues where the resources return values from heavy attacks were not scaling upwards after V50 or level 50. That's good. Numerous fixes to tooltips and grammar, which I I freaking do horrible spelling and grammar as you just saw there. Uh, numerous fixes to abilities display incorrectly placeholders. Uh, fixed issues uh, caused with staff animations. Ability costs are now now color color code in the tooltips. Magicka is light blue. Stamina is now green. Yay! So that's the basics on this. Now, one thing I'll go over before I get into the class abilities or anything else like that is there has been a major change to most of the damage shields inside here. I'm not going to I'm not going to sing out a single one, though I know that you're all saying that one class is going to be pretty bone because of this. I'm not so sure about that, but the reason I'm saying this is because currently they're making so, so all damage shields are going to be lasting about six seconds and having maybe a little bit extra maybe eight seconds on certain ones there but the reason that that is a important change in my opinion is because it's making it less of a set it and forget it buff and much more of an active skill to keep on your bar if you want to keep yourself up for a rescue a lot of a lot of way that certain players were playing was they were setting this up you know setting up a damage shield then another damage shield then another damage shield shield stacking aka and then never taking any damage because their buffs would last so long people couldn't get crits on their shields and you know they were you know they had high defense in invulnerable to crits a lot of resource regeneration and high mobility that's kind of a recipe for a disaster with this change they've made it so it's a lot more of a rescue so if you need to rescue yourself 
Use your shields. If you need a damage, go ahead and press that, press that, press that uh, damage and see if you can kill them before they kill you. But you have one, you have to go with one or the other, or be able to manage yourself to put up a shield quickly, get a hit, hit in, and maybe have to put another shield up quickly, or get killed. That seems like a, a, a fair balance to me, but we still haven't seen how it's going to shake out with some of the stuff in PV, in, inside of uh, PvP open world because we don't have a whole lot of people on the PTS doing open world, mostly just duels at this point. So, first off, we're going to go into the Dragonite and some of the changes that have been changed here. Now, if you guys have been following me on the forums here, you know that some of the stuff I've been putting up there has been about poison. And guess what they did with this? They put up poison. I have to say that most people have been saying, like, Zoss doesn't listen to us, Zoss never... Li Go fucking read the forums and post up there, please. If you got yourself banned from the forums, well then, get somebody that has a form account and ask them to post for you. But, like, this has been suggested by myself and a couple others that we may want to put poison damage on this stuff here because it scales up nicely with the mighty ability. So now we have things like Venomous Claws here, which is now a poison ability. Uh, we have Fiery Breath with a more for Noxious Breath, which gives poison. We have Magma Armor with the option for Corrosive Armor, which gives poison damage, which goes with this DLC, which a lot of people are probably going to be looking at. Now, in addition to that, you have the Burning Breath, you have the Unstable Flame uh, Morse, which now have the uh, poison. You also have Kindling and World on Fire here. All these are um, additional two seconds here. Just looking for them. Sorry, kindling is now combustion. And it affects both burning and poison status effects. And rolled on ruin. Increase the damage for flame and poison area effects by 3%. That means... I'm going to say that... It, I'm not sure if it's everything in Ardent Flame area. But I'd say if it's everything in there. That means some of the other stuff that we're going to go over later. Is also going to synergize with that pretty well as well. In addition to that, fragmented shield, like I said, damage shields are getting reduced. Um, basically, uh, changes so the base ability it would increase damage dealt to Morse uh, with shield expires and removed the, by 30%. Obsidian shield reduced the duration of the ability by 6 seconds uh, from 20 seconds. So if you go to the Earth and Heart line here, any shield here, 6 seconds, 6 seconds. Game major mending with Indias, fragmented shield, you do the damage and you uh, get a bit more uh, damage shield on top of that. Now, that's the uh, DK line there. I'm going to go ahead and go into some of the weapon line stuff here. I'm going to skip around a little bit here, I realize, but I have to log out of a character and come back in to go e over each and every single one of these here. So, hopefully you'll bear with me. So under the two-hander, uh, cleave has been changed. Um, increase the damage over time with this ability by and is morphed by twenty percent here. So you're going to see a lot more damage inside the uh, inside this. Uh, executioner reverse slash morph morph. Increase the amount of damage done with the bonus uh, delta low health targets. Okay, so. The Reverse Slash Morph is the one that is really kind of interesting here. Um, testing this on the PTS, basically, this now, instead of, uh, this one here d gives extra um, crit damage with, uh, ex extra damage to all abilities inside the two-handed line. This one now gives extra damage to two targets around the enemy that you're executing. This is actually kind of nice because in, in PvP or PvE, right, you may get one enemy down to like below 25% or actually less than 50% and you start doing a lot of damage to them. Which means if you find that one person in a Zerg, you can actually start critting that guy for, you know, 10k health and then hitting his buddies for 5k health with the same damage because he's low on health. I, that That is a freaking awesome awesome type of ability here because that makes it much more of an AoE that you can use with cleave um, you can also morph it with upper with dizzying swings actually no wait that's oh sorry I'm incorrect about that I, f I forgot about that it doesn't take on two enemies at once now anymore 
But you, you can use that reverse slash. You can use that with uh, various AOE abilities and just do a lot of damage to small, you know, to a lot of targets as long as you find that squishy target to it. Uh, Four momentum, increase the duration of the snare and the mobility mo immunity. Mm -hmm. I don't know if many people are going to go with that. Um, despite the fact that it gives immunity to snares and immobilization, like it does with um, shuffle, shuffle is still going to be at most of the attention, I think, because it gives the evasion and also gives the immunity. Is it going to be better than uh, rally? Not really, because you only have a few abilities inside of the uh, stamina trees that can actually give you heals. So I, I don't think that's going to really change a whole lot. Uppercut. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I should go over Uppercut as well. Uppercut is now no longer giving major empower on its one... Or, sorry, one ability here. This one here, Dizzy and Swings, is giving a stun and a knockback on enemy hit. But the one that gives empower um, increases the next damage, but no longer knocks them back or gives a CC. So you're going to have to add something else in there if you're expecting a CC on top of this. Let's see, one-handed shield... Defensive stance. Uh, fixing an issue with a um, more stun effect would trigger on every reflection if you layered the defensive stance with other reflect abilities. Ah, okay, so they're talking about the defensive stance here. Uh, for to for spell projectiles also stun the enemy. So if you're a DK and you used to be stacking this with uh, dragon wings. Uh, basically, the dragon wings would also give the stun effect to it, even though the st defensive stance was never touched. That was a bit of a bug there, and this is going to make it so that they no longer are able to use it. Um, power bash. This has also been changed here, too. So, two more that we have now. Uh, Verubian bash also afflicts major defile, reduces the enemy's healing received. I've always... I don't know. I know a lot of people were using power slam here because they were using it to... Um, knock people down and basically exploiting it so people could they the stun that it was being used was um like you couldn't break free from it for some reason uh but i always liked using reverberating bash myself because of the major defile it's one of the quickest ways to get major defile out there and if you're using uh befoul it's like a 40 percent debuff to healing which is really useful when you have somebody that's spear jabbing uh but power slam this has been changed over so now when you uh, when slotted, you're blocking any, any, um, any attack increases the damage done with the next power slam by 25% for 5 seconds. So, that increases the damage quite significantly when you block somebody on that. Um, I'd be interested to see a build with that. Uh, using that, maybe uh, some of the other stuff there that reflects damage. But, I'm not sure if that's going to really get people into it. Next up, do wield. Okay, Blade Cloak, fixing issue with the abilities of the morphs. Um, that uh, would not deal on the final tick of damage when the cloak ticks six times over at the full duration, not just five. Alright, that's interesting. Uh, Blind Fury, Fury Morph. Renamed to Bloodthirst. Okay, so basically they made Fury into what um, a single target, uh, not biting jabs, um, sweep. So it heals you for the percentage of the damage caused on the final hit. So you keep on damaging people, and then on the final hit, you get a lot more health back. So that's 3,000 damage on the last target, and then 60% of that damage you get back. Now, Hidden Blade increases the amount of um, time this ability and its morphs take to provide major brutality buff. For 20 seconds from 10 seconds. So basically, you get Major Brutality for much longer, much more on par with Mate Rally, and you don't have to keep on spamming Flying Blade to get your Brutality anymore. Uh, rapid Strikes, uh, Flurry Morph. Each uh, hit is increased with the damage of the subsequent hit. Basically increased uh, some of the damage by like 2% on that. Uh, Shroud Dagger, Hidden blade, blade Morph. In addition to changes made to the base ability, two daggers become um, bounce on this morph, deal 20% more damage to per bounce initial damage. Increase the damage by, by a flat 50% of the initial damage. Eh, it's nice. I don't know if it's great, but... Bow. 
Ah, right, where is he here? Draining shot. Scout shot morph. Okay, magnum shot, we typically use this to, you know, hit yourself away from a, a target and also bounce the enemy away from you if they don't have CC immunity. Really helpful for getting away from targets inside PvP. Draining shot. Uh, now heals you after the disorient disoriented. This is going to be interesting because a lot of builds don't have stamina heals. And I think this might actually be a lot more useful for people that are trying to keep their distance on them. Um, still don't like that you don't you, you lose your your distancing ability here with Magnum Shot. Draining Shot, though, might be enough to get some, some distance and also get some heals in, though. Alright, and then a Restoration Staff. Steadfast Ward. Ability and Smorse can no longer shield uh, allies through walls or line of sight to blockers. So, basically, if you're hiding behind a keep wall or something like that, you can no longer use that. It's a now line of sight ability. Okay, now in the armor lines here. Annulment. Uh, reduce the duration of this ability is morphed by 6 seconds uh, from 20 seconds. In addition to that, the ability and Smorse are now absorb all damage instead of just spell damage. This one here. So basically it's a much more powerful damage shield that takes on a lot more. Increase the shield, absorbs magic based on, um, on the number of light armor equipped. Still, six seconds. They've reduced all damage shields, okay? Now, uh, did they go over medium armor? I don't think they did. Nope. So, we're going to go look at heavy armor here, guys. Heavy armor. It's been changed around a lot here, okay? Um, bracing. No longer have bracing. It's now called Wrath. Gain 10 damage or weapon damage or spell damage for 6 seconds after you take damage, stacking up to 10 times. So you can basically get 60, uh, 60 weapon damage. Uh, or no, 10, 10 times 10. 100 weapon damage or 100 spell damage uh, after each time that you're hit. That's not bad, especially with people that put AoEs or um, different dots on you. On the ground, you can take a lot of weak hits and get yourself up. Um, it's not a huge chunk of damage, though. I, I feel like you get more with the medium armor, but it kind of goes well with the heavy armor like mentality that you get hit and then you return it to people. So that's definitely an improvement. Uh, Constitution, they also get an improvement here as well. Uh, increase the health recovery and also stamina and magic recovery uh, every time you're hit, but one only once every eight seconds. Uh, current bonus is uh, 1,302 based on heavy armor that we have. Um, this can be increased like two times though. Oh, I'm sorry if I don't get myself out of that. So that increases the health recovery, but doesn't actually increase the um, the stamina or magicka recovery on, or recovered on that. Uh, Juggernaut increase the amount of health maximum the passive increase um, grants per heavy armor piece from one half uh, to to one to two percent from 0.5 to one percent. So it's giving more health based on the number of heavy armor pieces that you have on. And then rapid mending. This passive is no longer increments and in bonus uh, for each piece of heavy armor. Now it requires five pieces of armor or more to be worn. Increase the healing taken by four and eight percent. The ability is now increased from the resources of heavy attack by twenty-five and fifty percent in all ranks. So we're talking about rapid mending here. So, increases the healing received and increases the magic and stamina that your heavier attacks receive restore by 50% there. That's kind of interesting. It really makes it much more of a heavy armor type of, like a heavy attack type of build. Um, which might be a little bit more suited for a heavy armor type of character. I'm not sure how a lot of this stuff is going to work or pan out in the long end though. Alright, and now just to uh, cover some of the werewolf stuff here while we're here. Uh, Call of Plaque has been redesigned for the abilities, now reducing the cost of your staying in werewolf form by uh, 10 to 20% for each transformation of the werewolf in your group, including yourself, up to a maximum of 40 to 80% at ranks 1 and 2. So that is talking about Call of the Pack here. 
right here. So that's basically saying um, everyone that's like if, if everyone goes werewolf, you get a reduction for the werewolf form that you have uh, that you have there, which is kind of nice. But with this poison update, I think this is still going to be a lot of werewolves that don't want to transform inside Cyrodiil. We'll see though. Uh, pack leader, this transformation of the morph, redesigned the morph so it now summons two dire wolf companions to fight alongside you in the duration of your transformation. If killed, the dire wolves will return after 16, 14, 20, and 10 seconds. So, pack leader. Where is that? A oh, werewolf transformation morph here. Okay. So, I don't have that, unfortunately, unlocked because this is a PTS, but. That's something interesting to say. All right, now some of the changes here with the fighters and mages guild. Okay, this has been made into a stamina line. As you notice, all the abilities are now stamina based. If you haven't seen this before, um, and on the bottom, you notice that no longer you're no longer getting a bonus against vampires, undead, or anything else like that. That is now strictly under the still tracker line. Fire Guild's abilities get, deal damage to additional 20% to Undead, Daedra, and Werewolves. You need to have this passive to get that uh, extra damage that you're looking for there. You still get extra damage or extra ultimate for killing Undead and Daedra. Slayer weapon go, weapons uh, damage increased by 1% for each Fighter Guild's ability slotted. Which will be really interesting to see somebody slot up like four of these abilities to like give themselves an extra 5%. Yeah, you give yourself an extra 5% and then with the Dawnbreakers of, like, um, Flaws Dawnbreaker here, give yourself an extra 2% on top of that. Eh, not bad, I guess. But you gotta build it up there. Alright, Banish the Wake of the Past is now granting ultimate whenever you kill werewolves. Yep, we talked about that. Uh, Camouflage Hunter and its additional base morphs. This uh, morph also grains minor berserk after dealing critical hits from crouch. Okay, so expert hunter, camouflage hunter, critical hits from crouch gave you minor, minor berserk. Um, so it no longer gives you the extra damage here as well. Um, invoke the expertise of your anatomy, enemy behavior, detect from stealth and invisible enemies uh, around you for five seconds. Exposing the enemies can no longer return to self for three seconds. So basically it makes it like a mage light ability using the stamina morphs. Evil Hunter on the other side, invoking your expertise enemy, uh, your anatomy and the enemy behavior, detect from stealth and invisible uh, for five seconds. Exposing the enemies can after return to stealth for invisibly for five seconds, more like a mage light again. When your Fighter's Guild abilities uh, cost 25% less. When slotted, you also gain major sla savagery. So they changed the, this up quite a bit here, so it's no longer stacking a shit ton of damage on everyone. Uh, circle Protection, this, morph in it, uh, this ability is morphs, and now gains minor endurance buff in addition to minor protection buff. Okay. Dawnbreaker, the ability is the more slowly to deal da bonus damage to Undead and Daedra, and now deals physical damage instead of magic and damage, which really helps the stamina builds. Dawnbreaker Smiting. In addition to this change um, for this ability, the morph now also knocks down enemies instead of um, Undead and Daedra. <coughs> and now deals physical damage. We also reduced the duration of the knockdown from 2.5 seconds from 5 seconds. Evil Hunter, we went over that. Expert Hunter, went over that. Flawless Dawnbreaker. In addition to making the changes to the base ability, we also reduced the amount of weapon damage from the morph from 2, 3 to 5% from 5, 6, and 8% that it used to be. Uh, intimidating Presence. Um... Passive now also reduces Fighter Guild's abilities by 20%, which is nice. Rigor Preservation. Uh, changing the abilities, redesign the morph. Um, causes a roll dodge for 20% while in the area effect. Okay, so Rigor Preservation gives you less chance or reduction on roll dodging, basically. So turn undead, fears undead, wills Daedra. Cast in the circle. 
Range of preservation reduces stamina cost for roll dodging uh, for allies in the ring. So you could just like spam rings of preservations around and everyone could just roll dodge their way through Cyrodiil. Servo bolts. Let's take a look at this one here real quick. Silver Surge has has um, hit five additional enemies for reduced damage. And it reduces the movement speed and no longer locks them down. Silver Leash. Deals more damage, activating to pull your target. And trap Beast, rearming trap. Rearming, uh, traps, um, trap rearms once after firing. So it no longer keep continually goes over and over again. Lightweight base trap. Um, can be placed up to 20 me meters away. So you can now, like, cast it away from you rather than have to have it right at your feet. See, is that everything there? Mm, okay. Uh, Mage's Guild. Uh, a few a few other changes here as well. Uh, balance equal and morph. As physical and spell resistance as well now. Also redesigned the morph so no longer grants major fortitude for 17 seconds after casting. Instead, grants major resolve and major ward. Yep. Uh, equilibrium. So that this would actually this one will be. This is a little weird. So now you take health away to get magicka back, but you can now get major resolve and major ward from it, which would be a tanky type ability. So what do you see a tank using balance? That'd be weird, but maybe. An equilibrium reduces the amount of health cost for this ability by 20%, and the amount of magic gained in exchange for remains unchanged. Okay, that's good. Then finally, Undaunted. They made changes to Blood Altar, Bone Shield, and Trapping Webs. Bone Altar. Increased duration for Sanguine Altar. Um, Alice can activate Blood Funnel in the Synergy to heal themselves for 100% of their max health. Um, oh, and Conjure Blood Fountain to grant minor, minor life steal to you and to your allies, healing you for 2% of damage done. An Overflowing Altar. Amount of, um, increase the amount of uh, Synergy heals. Okay, so Blood Feast increases, um, heal yourself for 62% of their max health. This would be interesting in certain cases here. I don't know. It, it, if you, I, I can see this being used in like maybe a siege. Like everyone's up on the wall and needs uh, healing or something like that. Put down blood altar. But I wouldn't be seeing it be used in like any active fight that's not just a long duration though. Now trapping wise has been changed. And guess what? Since it's spider based, it's now poison or stamina based and it has poison to it. So you have Shadow Silk here, which gives more powerful Black Widow spiders when you activate this energy, or Tangling Webs, which this energy uh, also fears the enemies when uh, activated. Both of these, I think, are pretty good here. Um, reduces the movement speed, um, uh, gives uh, five seconds of webs, and burst into venom, and then extra poison damage on it. I can't really argue with it. Finally, Bone Shield here. You got Spike Bone Shield, returns damage um, to melee attacker. Um, this will be, let's see here. So, uh, the Sword of the World of the Bones, absorb damage equivalent to 50% of your maximum health and return 30% of damage to melee attackers. So, 50% of your max health, then 30% of that damage back to melee attackers. So, again... The more health you have, the more health that you, more damage you're going to be uh, sending back to people, which will be interesting to go with some of those other sets that we looked at before. I think the last few ones I have here, yep, at least on this right here, um, on the assault line, magic and detonation and proximity detonation. Now, they changed this so it's not doing as much damage to people and single target. But it now increases based on the amount of people you have there. So, Magic Detonation um, 
and its more abilities have um, reduced the damage by 45%, but now they now deal 25% 25% additional damage per target hit up to 10%. And the cath of the bonus is about a total of 250% t- dam- total damage. Up from the 100% damage d- total. The net result should result in a significantly less damage to one target, but significantly less damage to 10 targets. I.e., you have to have a whole lot of people for a inevitable detonation to be good. But if there's a lot of people zerging and staying around, it's still going to kill people and it's still going to like piss off a lot of people if you do it. I would recommend... Um, be looking at some of your some of your builds there. I know a lot of people are using this right now in PvP because it is the meta and it can kill single targets and multiple targets now. You may have to look at this being a back bar type of thing and then the main bar is hopefully going to have a lot of single target stuff that's going to help you with that, but I don't know. You just watch some of those. Uh, watch some of the uh, metas that are coming out there. Uh, Vigor, now casting Vigor with a staff equipped no longer makes the staff go through your legs. Oh, that's good. I wouldn't want to have have a female character and have a staff go between my legs there. Emperor, uh, tactician. I'm not really too concerned with uh, Emperor. Uh, Support guard. Guard is actually kind of useful now. Especially if you're going to be running a heavy tank build. Basically, they took away the... um, they took away the the constant debuff of stamina, and now it basically makes a life bomb between somebody, and you take on 30% of their damage. When you're um, bonded to them, you have either minor vitality given to them, or you can um, also grant them minor force and increasing their uh, critical strike damage by 12%. I think that the Stuart Guard is going to be very nice for certain characters and like you might see gank groups with like one heavy armor build and like a bunch of like night blade builds or night blade stamina builds going in with it or whatever no, let's face it night blades are probably the best at ganking right now um so i think this will be very interesting for um pvp and a few others there also makes it so you may have tanking a lot easier as well with an off tank like you can have you can go ahead and cast lifelink with another tanky build if you have like a DPS that has a little bit too much health to it. So now you can take on some of the damage for the tank but not, while not taking on a whole lot of damage and getting through the dungeon a lot quicker. So that will be interesting as well. Alright, let me flip over to a few other characters here. And we can take a look at some of the other skill changes here. So, be right back, guys. Okay. How you doing? Here we're done here again. We're here on a Nightblade on PTS. To going over some of the abilities here again. Uh, that have been changed. The capacity strike is one. Deathstroke morph here. Uh, deals disease damage and stuns enemies. So, it's going to reduce healing that they take. Um, in addition to that, this has also been reduced on the damage en- end of it. So, reduced it by 5, 4.5% on Deathstroke, um, and it's Morse by 4.5%, so it's doing a little bit less damage on top of that. Uh, Killer's Blade, Assassin's Blade's Morph. The damage now deals disease damage instead of magic damage. So, uh, where the DK was getting poison, a lot of the stuff on the assassination line here is getting disease, which is also going to help them take out a lot of people that are trying to heal a lot more, too. Uh, Killer's Blade, Assassin's Blade Morph, yep. Lotus Flay in, Teleporting Strike Morph. Snares the target and uh, stun- stunning them and deals damage over time to target by nearby enemies. Uh, basically, they fixed an issue where the damage over time applied to this morph was not being correctly suppressed and the invisibility such as Shadow Cloak. So, no longer you're going to get yourself knocked out with Lotus Fan. Well, let's focus, Green Focus Morph. The Morph is Spectral Bow Proc has now been renamed to Assassin Scourge and now deals disease damage instead of poison damage. Yep. So, this one here, Grim Focus. Spectral Bow now deals disease damage. Uh, Shadow, Shadow Cloak, 
A fishing issue with his ability and his morphs could not be used completely to negate a meteor. <laughs> so you can no longer use Shadow Cloak to negate meteors and all that stuff. And then the other thing I noted as well was um, Nightblade Siphoning, um, Power Extraction. So if he strikes. Now deals disease damage instead of poison or um physical damage here. Remember looking right? No, no, power extraction, right? Power extraction drain power morph. Oh, this one, sorry, wrong one. Uh, okay, so yes, this one here is now doing disease damage instead. Which is all interesting as well. And what's the last one here that I was looking at? The last note. Oh, teleporting strike. They reduce the damage by 6.5%. So using that as a high damage ability inside PvP is not going to help as much anymore. Uh, because of that reduction there. I think the only thing that bothers me with this... like Adding, adding disease to this is kind of cool and kind of nice. But when I take a look at Mighty... Okay, yeah, that is good. Physical poison disease damage by 1%. So you put everything to mighty, you should be good with that and getting getting your damage up on the stamina build. That's a pretty good streamline on that. I'm not... I don't think that's pretty bad there. That's just some of the changes here. I may be, There may be other ones here that they've uh, put in since then or when they come out live. Um, so do take a look at the forums there to see some of that. I'm not a Nightblade expert, but... I can at least mention some of the stuff that's just come up here in the forum. So this, so I'll catch you guys a little bit later. We're going to get on to a Sork and take a look at some of the changes there as well. All right, here and I'm back here again. We're going to be going over the Sorcerer this time and some of the changes that we have here on the notes. Uh, one thing is uh, Dark Magic. Uh, dark Exchange increases the amount of health restorer from the ability and is morphed by 100%. So Dark Exchange here. It's giving a lot more health back, also giving a standard amount of uh, magic back. But that's I don't know. That's a pretty good freaking heal there. Even though it's one second, though. That's that's the issue there. If it was if it was if it wasn't a one second cast time. All right, under storm calling. Uh, disintegrate, uh, re um, the passive ability to implosion. Every cast shock damage, you have a chance to 3% to instantly disintegrate enemies under 50% health. Uh, dealing 4,000 damage, whenever you fi deal physical damage, you have a 3% chance to instantly pulverize enemies under 15% health, um, for 4,000 damage. Mm, not bad. Uh, passive also grants a uh, physical damage based on your chance. Yep. Update this passive tool tips to indicate the health threshold that is triggered. But getting people to 15% is definitely hard, but it's nice to have a passive uh, execute where you don't have to really think about it. Energize. This passive is now also increasing your physical damage uh, done in addition to shock damage done. So this one here. Increase your physical damage and shock damage by 3%. Hurricane and Lightning Form Morph. Converts stamina da uh, um, converts a stamina ability and deals da physical damage. Uh, increases the size and uh, damage of a longer the longer it's active. Creates minor minor expedition when activated, increasing your movement speed so you can go ahead and just go ahead and capture anyone you want to. Uh, the issue I have with these things here is like Sorks already have so much mobility with like e even though Blink is a magic ability on this and a stamina morph would be using this they'd be able to Blink then use this to get gain so much ground really quick this one here gives you major expedition too boy mobility on a sorcerer is freaking insane at times Surge, uh, yes. Ability is more says, um, restored to a flat value of health whenever you deal critical strike. 
Um, it is now proc and critical high str uh, strike instead of dealing damage and critical strikes, but can only restore health every one second. So we're talking about surge here. Also gain major surgery or increase the healing effect. Now, a lot of people have been complaining about this because this is one of the major healers, heal abilities for the Sork. And they take away the they took away the ability to do a shit ton of healing with this. And then also they went into Cyrodiil and they also reduced his healing by 50% like every other ability there too. A lot of people are complaining about this because the, the Sorks don't have a whole lot of um, stability on them. In addition to this, in the overarching issue of this as well, is the fact that all the damage heals that they have on them have now been reduced to 6 seconds. Um, though one ability here... Empiring Ward has been increased to 10 seconds at least. So that's another one that's going to have to take some uh, hits there as well. Oh, and I didn't, since I didn't cover it as well, uh, the the specific ones have been changed here. Um, absorption, which I can find here under Negate Magic Morph. Uh, Globe is now healing allies instead of, uh, instead of just, um, like... Uh, negating them and uh, suppressing them and all that stuff. So it's actually kind of useful for a healer build now. Um, let's see here. Fixing issue with the Sork pets. Do not uh, get physical resistance. Um, they all now have the normalized physical element. Da okay. So under Daedric, which has gotten so such a little use here, all these guys now have physical resistance on top of it. Uh, bound armor. Uh, the ability to morph no longer permanently change your appearance when they're toggled. Instead, they only now briefly display the visual effects when they're toggled on. So, your bound Aegis here and bond armaments here no longer take over your look. You can now, uh, now be a special snowflake out here and get, still have your bound armor. Uh, Conjure Ward reduced the duration from 6 seconds to 20 seconds, but like I said, we just... they, they Kept it up at like 10 seconds for one of the morphs there. Uh, let me verify that though. Kind of ward. Sec seconds. And then 10 seconds for the empower ward here. Still, it's making an active damage shield rather than a passive buff. Uh, which is, I, I, I think it's still... It, it's up in the air if that's good or bad. But it makes it so it's going to be a little bit more interesting to see a sork out in, in PvP and not be like... Oh great, I have to go deal with these damage shields again. After Summer uh, resigned this passive ability to now grab grant you 4 and 8% of the maximum health whenever you uh, have a Daedric pet out at a time. Um, and passives actives or the passives actives uh, oh sorry, the passives abilities old bonus uh, are now baseline effects for your pets. So you basically get a buff to your pets and the expert summoner here is giving you a bit more health on top of that. Oh, and then Thunder and Presence, Hurricane, Resign and Morph to increase the size of your area damage. Okay. So that covers most of the stuff here on the Sork. I'm going to go over onto the Templar next, and we'll take a look at that as well as some of the Vampire line changes as well. Meow, meow, meow. All right, here and done here, back again. Take a look at what they've changed with Templars, and not a whole lot. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, but uh, extended ritual. This morph has uh, now increased the amount of neg negative effects from cleanse, uh, casting from five to two. I can understand that. They have a lot of negative effects coming in with the poison, so they're going to be able to remove a lot of them. I don't know. I've always been kind of iffy on the Templar because having one class that can cleanse and everyone else has to use Purge doesn't seem like it's a lot of parity. It seems like you have one class that's made for healing and then the other ones are just kind of lackluster in it. But that's just my opinion. Uh, Ritual Retribution Cleanse Morph. This is morph and ability now increasing the amount of healing done uh, to you and your allies by 20%. This uh, ability is done to enemies who have who ha has been increased by match its value. Eh, Alright. 
And then Sacred Ground, fix an issue with the passive abilities. Movement speed redu reduction was uh, removing the enemy players from crouch or invisibility. That sounds kind of nasty. And then last one, fix an issue with burning light. Um, with the passes for firing both for physical and magic procs together. So Templars kind of got hosed because a lot of things got fixed. <laughs> that's kind that's kind of how I feel on this patch here. Um, they took away the double dipping from like. Uh, where is it here? From puncturing sweep. So you're no longer getting crits for both healing and damage. So you're no longer getting, like staying alive forever with those crit heals. And they took away a lot of the exploits that were coming out for the class. Sorry Templars, but everything's all... F at least they're making everything fair. Hopefully you don't mind. So that pretty much wraps up the class abilities right now. Apologize if my voice is going on me here. Oh wait, am I missing? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm missing an entire line of stuff here. God damn it. That's not it. Of course it's not it. <laughs> Alright, sorry. Um, Adric Spear. Burning Light. This passes now deal physical damage or magic damage based on how which uh, whichever magic, weapon damage or spell damage is higher in respect. So, Adric Spear... Fine. Burning light, burning light, burning light, burning light. Okay, so we're talking about this here. Um, deals to physical damage and weapon damage scaled off that. So, okay. So this is with the um, gives you that twenty five percent chance when causing an extra damage when you hit them with it. Something from this line here. All right, Dawn's Wrath line here. Uh, Power of Light Backlash Morph. This morph now deals physical damage instead of magic damage. Hmm. Purifying Light. Effects, when the effects ends, the pool of sunlight remains the, attached to the enemy, healing the nearby allies. Or Power of Light. Target's also a major fracture, major breach, and the physical distance is reduced by... Yep, okay. Um, pure beam of sunlight, copying their damage taken by 6% and releasing 80% of that additional physical damage t upon them. Hmm, be interesting to try that out for a stamina build. Alright, destroying light, a whole lot of changes here. Abilities, um, this ability always removes two harmful effects from, uh, casting Templars as well as the baseline effect, increasing from one harmful effect. Now it's five, uh, from what we see on the patch notes here. Standard Ritual, they increase the morph's duration from 18, 20, 22, and 24 seconds, um, respectively from its 16 to 22 seconds. So they increase it two seconds there. Force Healing, uh, rename the passes on this um, for Sacred Ground. Passes now to gain, uh, now gains an additional effect. Uh, effect is to get, um, provide major mending buff. Um, it now also reduces the movement speed of enemies by 15 to 30% whenever standing uh, in your cleanse ritual, rune focus, or rite of passage area effect. Okay, so adding snares to most of these healing effects here. Uh, purifying ritual, cleansing morph. Rename this ability to Ritual Retribution. In addition, we redesigned the morph so it now takes damage um, enemies in its area every two seconds uh, for the same amount for the it, it heals allies. So the cleansing ritual here. Increases healing and also damage to the enemies in the stand in the area effect. And extend the ritual increases the duration and the amount of harmful effects cleansed by it from yourself. And then Rust Ceremony. Is that, is, wait a minute, is that even useful now? Increase the duration and the amount of harmful effects cleansed from yourself. But we take away like five of these away for... Why would we even care? Like just put Retribution on, eh. I'm, I don't play Templars enough to know what's good or bad, but it seems like the, the Retribution one that's going to be a lot useful. 
And finally, Rush Ceremony. This ability is Morse can no longer heal allies through walls and other line of sight blocks. Yes, so a lot of the abilities where people were just hiding behind walls to get their heals off while somebody was fighting the front lines, not going to work anymore. You actually probably put yourself out there for people to see. So that covers a lot of our Templar line, at least. Hopefully that's going to be some good information for you guys. We have one more area to go over, which is going to be Vampire, which, as you can see, this guy has... This person has a kind of a red eye th situation going on here. So, actually, I don't even think I need notes on this. It's going to be a lot easier to explain. Okay, so vampires are going to change now to have more of a disease to manage. Okay, so you can see here we have vampirism stage one. Um, feeding reduces our stages. It takes six hours for us to get to vampire stage two, unless we use abilities using abilities advances the stage by 30 minutes per use okay so if you want to get to stage four you can do it and it's going to be a lot quicker to do so but you know, you're going to have to face consequences for that now some of the consequences or some of the benefits for that um you're able to use this to stun enemies supernatural recovery blood ritual etc vampirism only uh, only when you have vampirism stage three or higher, okay? So you have to have three or four to get this ability. It reduces damage dealt to you when you fall below 30% health. Lower health increases the effect, reduces damage up to 33%. Eye natural resistance. Um, reduces the severity of all health recovery detriments from stage two to four. Darkstalker, only usable in stage four vampirism. Uh, decrease the movement speed of penalty of crouch by 50% and decrease the time it takes to crouch by 50% during the night. But where is... Supernatural recovery. Okay, this is stage 2 or higher for the supernatural recovery. Um, basically gives you more stamina and magicka by 5%, 10% in the stage 2 area side here. Now, if you want to get any of these abilities, you have to go ahead and probably slot one of these on here, use them a couple times, and then just not feed to use it. So you're managing much more of a ability type thing here. If you pay for six hours and you need to go, go feed, you probably need to get a break anyway, so that doesn't seem like it's a huge nerf, uh, to be honest. Uh, let me see here if we can find the uh, other changes here. Misform, the ability is Morse now applies snares and immobilization, or sorry, it removes previously applied snares and immobilizations in addition to making you immune to new ones. So basically it makes you like a shuffle uh, for a Magicka build. Um, increase the cost of this ability by 5%. Uh, abilities and tooltips and uh, Morse indicate that he is always disabled in Magicka Recovery while at activated. So yeah, Magic Recovery doesn't work in Misform. Um, Drain Essence. Okay, so deals a little bit of magic damage and restores 20% of your missing health every one second for three seconds. So basically, it's a... Uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, it's a Dragonite's... It's on the tip of my tongue. God damn it. Um, uh, oh. Green Dragon Blood or uh, Coagulated Dragon Blood, basically. Um, does a bit of damage, stuns enemies, while also giving you 20% of your health recovery. So it's going to give you more health the lower health that you are. Um, it'd be interesting to see this with the um, other morph, uh, the uh, Ultimate Gaining Morph, because it's actually kind of a, a nice part to a build uh, to use, but you're going to have to build that stuff up. Um, or, sorry, you're going to have to build myself up to see what that's going to be like on this, and I really don't have time for that. Let's see. Poison Mist Form, re uh, renamed to Baleful Mist Form. In addition to, uh, addition to charges to the base ability, the morph now ticks extra damage each second for 1.5 seconds, and causes, um, causes them to deal damage one additional time over the duration. Uh, morph does now magic damage instead of poison damage, because this is a magic ability. And anything else new? Yes. Okay, vampirism. Uh, so now they changed it over, which is what something a lot of people were asking for on the forum. So I guess that they are listening to you on this as well. Uh, stage one. 
Uh, zero flame damage, zero vampirism ability reduction cost, and zero percent health re health health reduction. Stage two, fifteen percent flame damage, seven percent uh, vampire ability reduction cost, and twenty five percent health reduction or uh, health recovery reduction. Uh, stage three, twenty percent flame damage, fourteen percent uh, vampire ability cost reduction, and fifty percent health vet recovery reduction. And then finally, at stage four, 25% more flame damage, 21% more um, vampire ability cost reduction, and 75% of health recovery reduction. So that is a, it makes it much more of a manageable side for a lot of people who are trying to do different builds. I mean, for myself, I probably try to be using Undeath just to give myself a better. Uh, I, I probably would try to keep myself around stage three to keep myself with undeath, um, but at the same time, there, dark Starker is so nice to have, especially in Cyrodiil, um, just to get myself through that. But that's kind of where it is, guys. On that, so this has been the ability stuff here, and it's been a long night. <laughs> I apologize for rambling on like this. Um, before I get myself off this subject here, let's just go over real quick skill com combat and skill changes. Um, several classes are having changes. Weapon abilities are being redone. Heavy, heavy armor has been passes have been gutted and changed. Guild lines have been skills. Uh, guild guild skill lines have been redone. Fighters guild is being made for stamina. Mages guild being made for magicka. Vampire skills have also been uh, also made into a, a managed managed disease type of skill line. Adjustments to Cyrodiil skill lines and also adjustments to werewolf skills. Now, a lot of this is going to change. And it's probably not going to be how it is when it goes live. I do recommend you go ahead and look at somehow or look at how to track changes. Go watch the ETS. Um, go watch the ESO PTS forms. There's a lot of information there. They put patch notes out there constantly. Um, but also take a look at the patch notes when they release Dark Brotherhood before you sign on. You might find that some of the stuff that you saw in the streams here no longer applies and you don't want to go ahead and get a bad morph of something and then have to spend all that money to get a respect. Um, check out some of the Twitch viewers here on PTS, uh, but beware of spoilers, okay? Some of us also play some of the uh, content here, so if you don't want to get uh, spoilers on the quests, you don't want to see that. Uh, catch past ESO live episodes. Twitch.tv, ZeniMax Online Studios. Okay, that's ESO Live's podcast. You can find a lot of information there as well. Some of the stuff that may not be on the forums is listed on there too. Okay, and always check Reddit, r slash Elder Scrolls Online. Okay, that's going to have a lot of information on you, uh, on it for you guys. And hope you're going to get some uh, good information from that. But that's been some of the skill line changes. Hopefully, it's been useful for you guys. I'll catch you guys later after we get to the last part, which is going to be a summary of the Dark Brotherhood and what we think. <clears throat> and clear.